I want to talk for a few minutes today about uh, 5G technology and taxpayer money. We, we've all heard the term 5G. 5G stands for fifth generation fifth-generation technology. In short, what 5G means is incredibly fast data transmission. Data in going from my cell phone to the president's cell phone, my internet to your internet, the ability to connect a lot of different devices at the same time. Through 5G technology, which is wireless technology, we will be able to not only transmit data very quickly, we'll be able to transmit huge amounts of data, almost breathtaking amounts. And, and it's going to have a huge impact on American society. Uh, it's going to have a huge impact on the world. Um, in some respects, it's going to change the world. If, if, if technology has changed the world thus far, and indeed it has, among other things, it's made the world smaller, 5, 5G is going to change it even more. Um, for example, you'll be able to use your smartphone to open your garage door. Uh, you'll be able to use your smartphone and be a mile away to turn on your coffee maker. We'll be able to do surgery by internet. Surgeons will be able to be in one place and a thousand miles away a patient and that surgeon through robotics and other, other means, will be able to transmit the data to operate on that patient. Uh, driverless cars, which is going to change the world dramatically. And not only just the way we get around, it's going to change uh, our need for roads, it's going to change our tax base, it's going to change the insurance market. Uh, farmers. 5G is going to allow farmers to be able to be pre-warned about encroaching diseases. Farmers won't have to wait to see their crops attacked by certain diseases. Through 5G technology, they'll be able to know and predict that those diseases are coming. It's going to help us feed the world. Um, 5G technology is going to allow our young people to have virtual apprenticeships. If, if, if you're a young woman or a young man and you're right out of school and you're offered a, a, an apprenticeship, an internship, let's say in San Francisco and you're living in Duluth um, and you say, well, you, you're a student, you say, see, I don't have the money to move to San Francisco. I don't have the money to live in San Francisco. You'll be able to, uh, to do an internship through technology. Now, I mean, it's going to be a hundred times faster. And I don't, in terms of the amount of data, uh, I don't know how to quantify that, but, but it's going to be uh, uh, having an extraordinary impact on wireless technology. Now, what are we talking about here? When my, when my phone calls the president's phone, uh, what, what, what are we talking about? Really, we're just talking about radio waves. Excuse me. We're talking about radio waves. And a radio wave is nothing more than electromagnetic radiation. I don't want to get off the subject here. Uh, when, when my phone talks to the president's phone, uh, we're just sending radio waves through the air. Sometimes you, you might have heard that referred to as a spectrum. And that's basically how a cell phone and the internet works. 
except with 5G, the, the, the speed with which that data is, trans, is uh, transmitted and the amount of data will be substantially larger. Who owns those radio waves in the air through which those radio waves travel? According to federal law, the Federal Communications Act of 1934, we do. We all do. The American people do. Now, the federal government, through the Federal Communications Commission and other agencies, including but not limited to Congress, regulates those radio waves going through the air, which we call spectrum. But, but those radio waves and the air through which they pass are owned by the American people, just like a, natural, a, a national park. Uh, just like the oil and gas offshore in federal waters, just like the Rocky Mountains, they're owned by us, the American people. Now, there are certain types of radio waves that are owned by the American people that are perfect for 5G technology. These, these, radio, this, these radio waves and this spectrum, if you will, I'll use the term spectrum, but you remember I'm just referring to radio waves moving through the air. This particular spectrum that's perfect for 5, 5G technology um, is called the C-band. I don't know why they call it that, but that's what they call it. And it is between 3.7 gigahertz and 4.2 gigahertz. Don't worry about what that means. Just know that this spectrum, this part of the overall spectrum, is perfect for 5G. And it's perfect because it strikes a balance between coverage and capacity. And this, this, uh, this C-band, if you will, that's not too hot, not too cold, it's just right for 5G, is critical to our development of 5G technology. Now, since the American people own this C-band, and since many of our wireless companies that want to develop and offer 5G technology to the American people. Um, given those facts, the FCC is going to play an integral part. The FCC licenses Spectrum to, to companies that want to use it. Um, in other words, if, if, you're a, if you're a wireless company, and you want to use a portion of the spectrum, the radio waves going through the air that's owned by the American people, you go to the FCC and you say, I, I want to license that spectrum. And I'm willing to pay for it. And by law, not by custom, by law, what the FCC does, it says, okay, um, to be fair, we're going to hold an auction. And everybody who wants to bid on this portion of the spectrum can submit a bid. In the last 25 years, the FCC's done an extraordinary job, by the way, of, of um, getting spectrum out to the private sector and getting the American taxpayer paid for its property interests. In the last 25 years, the FCC has conducted over 100 of these auctions. The FCC has brought in $123 billion for the American people. Billion. That's nine zeros. I would venture to say, I've met with the folks at the FCC who handle the public auctions. They are incredibly experienced. They know what they're doing. Let me get back to the C-band. When we, when we left off, 
We were talking about the C-band being perfect for 5G. We have a lot of wireless satellite, oh, I'm sorry, wireless companies that want to want to lease it, if you will, want to license it, and the FCC is there in the middle. And you would expect that what we would do in this instance is what we always do. We hold a public auction. It has been estimated that if we hold a public auction, if the FCC holds a public auction and tells all the wireless companies that want to bid to come on down and bid, it will bring in 60 billion dollars for the American people. Sixty billion dollars. You know what we can do with sixty billion dollars? With sixty billion dollars, we can put one million kids through college, all four years. With sixty billion dollars, we could hire one million new cops for a year. With $60 billion, we could build 7,000 miles of interstate. With $60 billion, we can make sure that broadband reaches every crevice and corner of America, because right now it doesn't. If you're in a rural area right now, I don't want to overstate my case here, but in many instances, if you're in a rural area, you don't have the same broadband, both in terms of reach and coverage and speed, that people have in a large city. And that's even true before we get to 5G. We could even give the money back to people. We have 140 million taxpayers in America. If, if we just gave this $60 billion back to the 140 million taxpayers, it's about 430 bucks for every taxpayer in America. Now, I'm not suggesting that we do that. That's above my pay grade, making that decision. And for a lot of people, $430 isn't much money. But I've got a lot of friends for whom $430 is a lot of money. But in the middle of what I've just described, we've got a hair on the biscuit. We have three companies, and I'm not disparaging them. Two of them are headquartered in Luxembourg, and one is out of Canada. They're foreign satellite companies. And they've gone to the FCC. And they've said, look, we're going to make you a deal here. We know that we need to get this, this 5G, the C-SPAN spectrum out into the market as quickly as possible. We will do the auction for you. Doesn't matter that the FCC has already done 100 auctions and brought in $123 billion. These three foreign companies have gone to the FCC and said, let us do the auction for you because we can do it better and quicker, even though they've never done a public auction. And then they told the FCC, and by the way, we want to keep the money. We can do it faster than you, FCC, because even though you've done 100 plus auctions and we've never done one, you just trust me. We can do it faster than you. And we want you to give us the spectrum and let us keep the $60 billion. And the FCC is considering doing it. If, if, if my state has a lot of oil and gas, um, the federal government, the American taxpayer, owns the seabed of much of the Gulf of Mexico. And periodically, on behalf of the American people, the federal government leases out that seabed to oil and gas companies. To, uh, to explore for oil and gas. Now, when the federal government leases the land out, the federal government takes an upfront cash payment and a portion of any oil and gas that's found. Can you imagine what would happen if I went to the federal government and said, even though I've never done an oil and gas auction, 
I could do it faster than the federal government, even though the federal government's done thousands of them. So I want you to give me all the minerals in the Gulf and let me do the auction and keep the money. Can you imagine the reaction if I approached the federal government? They would do one, the, the people in charge of those oil and gas leases would do one or two things. They, they would either, they, I would end up either in handcuffs or a straitjacket. But that's what's being proposed here. And for the life of me, I do not understand why the FCC is taking this seriously. Now, an article just came out a couple of days ago. Um, I'll read you the, the first sentence of it. It came out of a periodical called Market Watch. On November 11th, just a few days ago, and this is how it starts. A big step in the U.S. deployment of 5G wireless could take place by year's end. As the Federal Communications Commission is expected to back a plan from the satellite industry for auctioning off radio spectrum. And they quote a couple of investment bankers. One investment banker group called Height Capital Markets and uh, another one called Beacon Policy Advisors. I don't know where they're getting the information, but they say the FCC has already agreed not to do a public auction, but to let these foreign companies have the spectrum and get the $60 billion. And the article goes on to explain that these three companies, these three foreign companies, the two Luxembourg companies, the companies and the uh, Canadian company, they spent $515,000 lobbying regulators and lawmakers on its auction plan. And then I go back and I look at another article that came out uh, not too long ago. And it talks about, it quotes one FCC commissioner. Sounds like he's already sold. He was asked about the idea of letting these, just giving the spectrum to these, to these foreign companies and letting them keep the money. Here's what he said. He says, most of the criticism of what is known as the CBA proposal, that's the proposal by the private companies, shows a lack of understanding of how the internal commission works. He says, don't let anyone try to lecture me on the commission's efficiency and timeliness. And this commissioner says, goes on to say, quote, I'm just quoting from the article, if someone or some entities make a profit for being at the right place at the right time, I will live with that outcome. In the grand scheme of things, if it's a contest between speed and government trying to extract a significant piece of the transaction through a lengthy process, I'll take the speedy resolution any day. Are you kidding me? What planet did he just parachute in from? And this is a current member of the FCC. Somebody needs to tell him about the president's executive order. Right here. By American. Hire American. Doesn't say hire Luxembourg companies. I have nothing against Luxembourg companies. I just prefer American companies. It doesn't say buy Canadian companies and hire Canadian. I can tell you what's going to happen if the FCC does this. First of all, the American people are going to lose $60 billion. Number two, they're going to get sued. They say they can do it faster. I don't believe them. But I know this much. I know a little something about litigation. I used to do it for a living. They're going to be tied up in court for about 10 years. I can tell you that because the Federal Communications Act requires a public auction. I can tell you what else is going to happen. The people who live in rural communities are going to get the little end of nothing. Because we won't be able to control who gets this C-band. And I will bet you the companies that end up with it start 
for, for, and I hope I'm wrong, and remain in the cities. So if you live in the country where I was raised, you don't get the benefit of 5G. Also, if we give it to these three foreign companies and they get to decide who gets the C-band, how do we control who ends up with our spectrum? What if they give it to Huawei? What if they give it to, to a company that violates our national security and our national intelligence? This is a really bad idea, folks. There is a bill that has been offered. It's a bipartisan bill in the House. I'm going to sponsor it in the Senate. It's offered in the House by two Republicans and two Democrats. And the bill is very simple. It just says do the right thing. This spectrum belongs to the American people. This C-band belongs to the American people. That $60 billion belongs to the American people. And I'm asking my friends at the FCC, do the right thing. Do what you've done a hundred times already. Let everybody bid. Let everybody bid. And take the $60 billion that you get from the American people. And let's spend it on something the American people needs, need. Um, with that, Madam President, I thank you for your time and attention. And I suggest the absence of a quorum.